Hey guys, check out this video of Bigfoot, aka Sasquatch, wrestling with a bear. Now the footage went viral all over social media yesterday. No one knows if someone has a personal relationship with this creature that he was able to stand there and record all of this happening. Right. But if this is real, guys, and this is not AI generated footage, and let's just say someone captured Bigfoot wrestling with his bear at the spare moment, this is going to make history, guys. I've never in my life seen any type of video like this on social media. In one point of the video, you could see Bigfoot wrestling with a bear, and then he falls down and loses control. I've always wondered if Bigfoot is an interdimensional creature that travels inside of a UFO with aliens. They temporarily allow him to do biological researches in the forest and then come back and pick him up. He's like the canine of the police officer. Many people all around the United States and all around the world in different countries, they call him Yeti. In Russia, he's like a white color. People have reported to have seen this Bigfoot creature in the forest, in the woods. And they say he leaves a very foul odor. Sometimes he cries. Sometimes he throws stones at people. But whatever this thing is, now we have him wrestling with a bear. What do you guys think? Comment below. Well, y'all already know what I'm going to say. That is definitely fake. <laughs> Because let's just say, let's just say Bigfoot was real. He would obliterate a bear. A bear wouldn't stand a chance. Manchester, Kentucky, there's an unusual piece of archaeology. It's very hard to explain. The Redbird River Petroglyph. Found in the early 1800s in Clay County, Kentucky, along the Redbird River, it's a 50 ton sandstone rock, about 20 feet in length and five and a half feet tall. It has eight old world languages inscribed into its surface. Each of these ancient languages were extinct before Christopher Columbus landed in the Americas in 1492. Archaeologists have found first century Greek and Hebrew, Old Libyan, Old Arabic, and Iberian Punic, which probably dates from the 9th century BC. Ogham, Germanic ruins, and Tiffanic Numidian are also on this stone. This is a first century Christian monogram in Hebrew and Greek letters. It means Jesus Christ, Son of the Father. This rebus is written in Ogham, or Early Irish, a Gaelic language. It means the right hand of God. There's also ancient pagan inscriptions as well. This one being the sun disk representing Ra, the Egyptian sun god. Could it be the ancient explorers from Europe, Africa, or even the Middle East came to America way before Christopher Columbus? On December 7th, 1994, the Red Bird River petroglyph fell from its sandstone cliff above the Red Bird River and was moved to Manchester, Kentucky. Today, you can visit this archaeological mystery in Rawling Stenson Park and marvel at this unexplained artifact. There were a bunch of people here before Christopher Columbus. So I don't even know what they trying to say. Man attacked by extraterrestrial. Check it out, guys. 
As you guys could see, this is a footage that I released before, but I slowed it down because I want you guys to see that whatever this creature is, it looks like a gray, tall extraterrestrial with very lengthy arms. And as you could see, as the man begins to open the door, the alien's arms are immediately touching him on his head. So the alien was able to initiate contact with this person and touched him on the head. Um, you know, the report is that whatever this creature is, um, disappeared. The man finally opened his door at night. This was around 2.30 in the morning. And he didn't see the alien outside at all. So whatever, you know, purpose this alien had being there, it was simply just to put his hand on this guy's head. This is a very weird case. This is a very weird video. Even I don't understand why did the alien come to visit him. Once again, this happened in El Paso, Texas. If anybody in Texas knows what this is, please comment below. Thanks for watching. World War III, Babylon, and Revelation. The person you see behind me right now is Cosmic Man. You guys all know him. Well, the majority of you guys do. This man breaks down the book of Revelation into real-time events that's happening. And is probably one of the most spot-on predictions, explanations, dissertations of Revelations I've ever heard. And with what I know... And with what he's saying, it's pretty fucking spot on. Um, and we're also hearing that 2025 would be the end of our reality. The veil will be lifted. I really believe that. We are into the age of Aquarius. We will be shifting dimensions. And we will go do a birthing thing. And remember, the Bible is a script that they're following. And they're about to show that script. They're about to play that movie. The world is a stage. Go watch this man's video immediately. And after you're done, please come back here and comment what you think about what he said. Do you believe him? Do you believe his example of what the Book of Revelation is? Because I'm here to tell you. Yo. Peace to God. Do y'all remember China McLean from the House of Pain? Sweet, cute little girl. Man, she, she, she went back, y'all. She went back. She said she was going to be working for God. And that's the only work she's going to be doing. But she went back. She wasn't telling us the truth. China, we actually believed you. We believed you. We did. And all this is an illusion. It's an illusion. This, this industry, for what it is, and everything that people look to and praise, Not important. I'm I'm doing God's work now. And I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> Don't put it plainly. But I am doing God's work now. Really? And that is all I'm doing. I don't know why I was wasting time before. I have not played the game well when it comes to the standards of this industry. As y'all can see, that was before. But y'all stay tuned for part two, and we gonna wrap this up. It's sad, it's heartbreaking. It. But y'all, always remember that when these celebrities say they're gonna do God's work, like what y'all heard her say, God is a title. That does not mean she's talking about the Most High, even though she referred to him. Will she control opposition? Let's watch part two. Follow for more. Let's go find that part two, y'all. So this is part two. Make sure you watch part one. China McLean, she went back. No, part one, we all heard and seen how she said she's basically done with the industry. And she would have regret staying, but she glad she left. Well, let's see what she up to now. It's going to break some of y'all hearts. Shout out to the Truth Is podcast. That's the content video that y'all will be hearing and seeing. Let's go. We have China not only exposing the industry, but also leaving it. 
The only problem with this is that it was all a lie, as China is not only back in Hollywood pushing the devil's agenda, but she is acting in a movie that's openly pushing occult teachings onto children. China McLean is back on Disney this time, reprising her role as Uma in the new Descendant movie. She plays a witch who's the daughter of Ursula. The movie's descendants are just like much of Disney, a cold themed nonsense to normalize witchcraft to young children. Just look at the symbolism in this movie. On the poster, they literally have an apple representing the forbidden fruit with a snake wrapped around it. This snake wrapped around the fruit represents the moment where Lucifer tempted mankind. This movie is about the occult and the forbidden knowledge. The fact that she's back on Disney to me is a major red flag, as Disney was created by Walt Disney, who was a part of the Demole Masonic Youth Organization. The Disney brand is not about God. It's about magic and the occult. Come on now. You know when that money dry up. All that, um, the industry is this, that, and the third. It be all hype, man. They literally have nothing else lined up after they decide to ditch Hollywood. They always come running back. Guys, look what's happening in California. Mega fault line splits, and this could be the end. Take a look. Slides instability this morning. The Rancho Palos Verdes area is facing new obstacles. Yeah neighborhood on the peninsula has lost power you guys this is the end you can see all those cracks and basically the whole road is like this and at this point in the road there's been a mud and debris flow some down trees y'all remember that video with the guy running around la telling them to evacuate yeah that didn't age well so this was a woman that said this it, this something w had took her dogs or took her animals and she put a trail cam in the backyard and got this image. Oh, boy. Chicago is responding to the Venezuelan gang members because a 28 year old Venezuelan migrant got right in the head in broad daylight. A car approached him and just took him out. The news confirmed that he was the intended target, so that right there shows you that he was one of them dudes that was down there messing around. Now, the news uh, broadcasted a video by a member of the Chicago gang community pretty much saying, hey, to the Venezuelan gang members down there, man, we know y'all walking around with machetes, pistols, and handguns, but we got switches. If y'all don't know what switches are, we gonna show you. And I was like, damn, that's how the news is getting down there? They're instigating this beef, man? They definitely sent out a message to them dudes that are down there BSing. I'm gonna tell you something, man. In my 34 years of life, I would've never thought that I'd be voting for a gang. Uh, let's go BD, B, what do they call them? B, the BDs and the GDs? <laughs> something like that, man. I would've never thought, man, I'd be voting for a gang. That shit is crazy. That's what these Venezuelan Americans have done to us as a people, man. Crazy. But yeah, shit's getting ugly, people. How many of y'all knew that there was something that sort of looks like a root? They call it a tree, but it looks like a root to me. Inside of the Washington Monument. Who would have knew though? Who would have thought? Because I, I ain't never knew that. When I arrived at Cat's house, there was a letter on my bed from Camilla. Dated two days previous, saying such exciting news about the engagement. Do let's have lunch <clears throat> soon when Vince Wells goes to Australia and New Zealand. And love to see the ring. Lots of love, Camilla. And that was, wow. You may recall seeing a picture of me sobbing mm -hmm. in a red coat when you went off on his airplane. That was nothing to do with him going. The most awful thing had happened before he went. I was in his study talking to him about his telephone rang, Camilla. Just before he's going, five weeks. 
So I thought, shall I be nice or shall I just sit here? So I thought I'd be nice, so I left them to it. And just break my heart, Rach. Mm. So I organised lunch. We had lunch. And very tricky, very tricky indeed. She said, you're not going to hunt, are you? I said, no. I just wanted to know that. As far as she was concerned, that was her communication. I was still too immature to understand all the messages coming my way. Boy, it's a lot of wicked stuff going on in this world. And it's always went on. It's like, it ain't just started. It's just now that we have access to the internet and to video. Like, we see it now. This stuff has been going on. So along the Madrid fault line, we're looking at an 8.4 earthquake coming. And I'm getting word that California is looking at 9.2. Bro. Y'all remember those conspiracy theories about when they say California, if it ever got a large enough earthquake, it would fall off of the off of the continent and sink like Atlantis did? Bro, it's looking more real. Check this out, you guys. The ground is moving in Rancho Palos Verdes in California, y'all. They're saying that the ground is moving at a foot per week, y'all. A foot per week. Y'all do know California was once an island. Damn, a foot per week. That's a lot of movement. Right? This is why they keep talking about this fault line in California. And it looks like it's about to be an island again, y'all. Check this out. An up-close look at the destruction in Rancho Palos Verdes caused by unprecedented land movement. Recent reports suggest the ground is moving about a foot per week. Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf is live tonight after navigating through some of the most treacherous areas of that neighborhood. Matthew? Christine, really unbelievable to see just how much this land has moved. Now, this road used to be up where our camera is now. I estimate probably 12 feet higher than where we are currently, and it's only getting worse out here. Fox 11 walking exclusively with experts viewing record-breaking land movement in Rancho Palos Verdes. As you can see, their elevation was about six feet higher. This neighborhood of Portuguese Bend, ground zero. The gas line breaks about three times a week. Gas, a frequent smell, homes and roads here cracking and sinking more every day. You have to think to yourself, this isn't real. And that's how I feel here. I feel like I'm on a movie set, but in reality, this is 25 people's homes. Drone video from the Alpha Structural team shows a giant separation of land cutting through the neighborhood. This whole part, it just pulled away from over here and opened up a chasm. They have abandoned the underground water mains. Water main pipes now above ground to prolong breaks. There's the garden hose that goes up to their house to give them water. A garden hose used to get water into a home. It would be challenging to walk upright. Absolutely. One homeowner climbing a rope to reach their house, but Friday, the driveway now possibly too steep even for that. And in the last week, I think it's gotten so bad, they're actually packing up, it looks like, and moving along with the house across the street. This area continues to drop roughly 12 feet in the last year or so. Just look at this home. It used to be street level, and now it's way down here. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. California was once an island, and it's about to be an island once again. They just built up around California to make it seem like it's connected with the other states. But y'all see what's happening to the planet right now, y'all. But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I'm only raising awareness to interesting situations during these... Wow. Makes me think. I wonder, does California have, like, some type of, you know, funds set back for stuff like this? Especially when we know California always get earthquakes. Probably not to this magnitude, but they always do. Do they have it where if families lose their home, they have some funds set back where they can rebuild? So, I mean, if the people got to pack up and just move and leave their whole life behind. It's like who has time to move the furniture out and the ground is moving a foot per week? Ridiculous, man. What? 
Hey guys, check this video out. This is weird. That first video of the alien, alien, so reaching in and trying to touch the guy. I don't know if that's real. Could be. But this one where the alien is just peeking out of the dark and not even charging him or doing anything. It just makes me think, why is he just standing there? If the alien really wanted to harm you, why is he just standing there? If he's real. Y'all let me know. I have a theory of all the shit that's happening in New York right now. I mean, all the shit that's happening in New York right now. You think it's just peculiar that New York seems to be such a high attention focal point on events that have happened in that city? It's also the most densely populated city and a big resistance as much as they want to label it. A sanctuary city the citizens of that city would be in direct conflict of the government's agenda they got numbers so they would probably want to get that out the way if you're thinking strategically in a cw type of mindset also what's happening in new york besides the tunnel being flooded is that there are a lot of key high-ranking public service officials being arrested now that's what the media is telling us what if i said eh, isn't that just convenient right before the election what if they are just people that are in tune with the plan and they're getting themselves out the way publicly out of the state of new york or the city and that is the reason or the cause behind the means why those specific officials, and I'm talking about commissioner, mayor, that's the reason why they're not available in office. Because you think they're arrested. In all actuality, they're getting the fuck out of that city. I think New York will be a focal point. Also, Twin Towers. Something's going to pop up. And I hope... I don't get a knock on my door FBI, no. when this comes true because I don't know what it is. I don't, I can't, I'm right. I can see across my fucking street where's New York City. And let me tell you, our skies are bit red. There is military flying over almost every fucking day. I saw two sons over the head of New York City and two wounds. And we just keep having event after event after event happen in New York City. What the fuck is going on? What do you guys think? What do you think the first place will be targeted? If it's going to be targeted. I know there's a lot of people who say, oh, nothing's going to happen. But that's because you guys have blind eyes and deaf ears. Like, we've been calling this. We've been calling it. And let me tell you. 2025 is only a couple months away. Peace to the gods. Shit is serious. And you know how serious it is? You have Snoop Dogg. Promoting solo stoves. I'm going to show you the video. Why you need a solo stove, a small solo stove in your house? For what? What are you trying to tell us, Snoop? What are we needing a solo stove for? Especially the times that we're in right now. Check this out. Buy this. This is a solo stove. Comes in all kinds of colors. Check them out. Y'all keep thinking shit is a joke and shit is a game. Look at the. I ain't gonna even lie though. Before he did this commercial, they were promoting those on TikTok shop forever. So I don't know what he talking about. I mean, you know, he, the people that uh, started selling them on TikTok shop could have gotten some investors and now they're taking it big and, you know, they made a lot of money off of them. So I don't know. 
but to see them out there now makes sense. America is. Look at the way the cities are. Don't you see and feel the outside world just don't feel right? Shit don't feel right like it used to. Snoop Dogg promoting solo stoves? For what? I got more to show you. I got more to talk about. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that follow button. And follow the YouTube in the bio. Fourth dimensional beings cast a three dimensional shadow on Earth and I can prove it scientifically, bitch. Small penny. This specific thought woke me up out of a dead melatonin sleep. I had taken three or four gummies and it still woke me up. Now, we're gonna start talking about it. Stay with me, focus. Don't laugh at me, but what got me thinking about this was a Bill Cipher edit. If you don't know who Bill Cipher is, he's a character from Gravity Falls. He is a three-dimensional being born in a two-dimensional world. His story, I think, is one of the most well-written plots of our lifetime. Never seen the show, love the character. But it got to me thinking. A dimensional creature will always cast a shadow on the dimension below it. If you are a 2D creature, like Bill Cipher's family, you would cast a 1D shadow. If you are a 3D creature, like me and you, even though I am 3D, my shadow here is still 2D. Okay, so just to surmise, dimensional beings will cast a shadow on the dimension below it. And since me and you are three-dimensional creatures, our shadows are two-dimensional. So, a fourth-dimensional creature would cast a three-dimensional shadow. Well, Fox, what the fuck does that mean? What the hell does a three-dimensional shadow look like? The Hat Man. Shadow people. Are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? I think you're picking it up. If a four-dimensional creature, assuming that the fourth dimension that we are talking about is time and space, were to cast a shadow in the dimension below it, it would be a three-dimensional shadow. Because when you go up a dimension, so does your shadow. Shadow people, the hat men, whatever you want to call them, are not entities themselves. That's why they never interact. That's why they just sit and watch. See, I can do all kinds of things with my shadow, but it cannot interact. Shadow beings can't interact because they're a lower dimensional representation of a higher dimensional being. I don't know. Maybe she, I don't know. I, I get what she's saying, but I just don't believe that. You know, because then if she's saying shadow peoples are a representation of a higher being, then that just cancels out the shadow people being spirits. So I don't know. But I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. So we back to all the weird videos, y'all. <laughs> so y'all know how I feel about a lot of these videos. Just, I don't know. I have no proof to say that it's real or to say it's fake. All I know is that people are saying that they are encountering them. And who am I to say that they're lying? But we also live in a world of fabrication too. So you got to be real vigilant and aware of what's going on around you. Because you never know. This lady here just said that she thinks that shadow people are representations of a higher being. Which could be just like us. And like who we are to our shadows. And I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It just don't make sense. But a lot of things in this world don't make sense. And that's mainly because we don't know half of the stuff that goes on in this world. And no matter how many books we read, we're never going to know for sure. It's all speculation. Until we get to the spiritual realm, we may, we'll never know. If there's a spiritual realm. I don't know. I mean, you can feel however you want to feel about that. But it is what it is. It's the truth. Right? But like I said, I can rant all day, but I won't. So I'm going to say what I always say. Do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hop in the description. Follow all my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person.